I have a confession. As much as I believe I am a Fallout fan, I've only ever played Fallout 4. I've never even made it past Prim in what is regarded as the best Fallout game, Fallout New Vegas. Most diehard Fallout fans will live and die on the hill that Fallout New Vegas is the best Fallout game. Some Fallout fans will die on an even bigger hill and claim that Fallout 4 is terrible, that the old games are relics, and that the only good game is New Vegas. And it's like, can you even call yourself a Fallout fan if you only like one of the games and just ignore the others? So I decided I would give New Vegas a real try, actually make it past the first mission, and see if the diehards are right. I attempted to beat Fallout New Vegas as a complete noob. One of the first things I discovered when I downloaded New Vegas is how unplayable it is. With the PC version, you need at least 20 mods just to make it not crash. And after I downloaded all these mods just to make it function, my game still wouldn't work. So I had to go through another hour of troubleshooting, which is a whole other thing. So when I finally booted up New Vegas, I wasn't thrilled about it. The first thing I noticed about New Vegas is how sick the intro is though. Watching through all the locations and seeing it slowly zoom out of Vegas, seeing yourself at gunpoint and then hearing the famous line The game was rigged from the start. It's just such a good intro to the game and it's a great way to show how big and dynamic the world is. After waking up from getting shot in the head, I am greeted by Fallout New Vegas' prologue and character customization. To me, this is the exact same thing as Fallout 4's Vault Tech rep or Skyrim's carriage sequence. Hey, you. You're finally awake. But as a diehard Fallout 4 fan, I do have to say that this sequence is much better. Getting asked random questions and going to a machine to test your stats while filling out Doc Mitchell's medical forms feels so much more satisfying and like you're really part of the world. You don't even really think about the fact that it's all just intro and prologue, while in Fallout 4 that's the only thing I think of. Another thing I noticed right off the bat is how much more complicated the character creation is. There are so many more RPG elements in this game and it's honestly a travesty that Fallout 4 downgraded its RPG elements. After exiting Doc Mitchell's house and stealing all of his private possessions, I was introduced to the great town of Good Springs. The first thing I did was go to the bar and start the tutorial of Good Springs. This is a great little intro and the first thing I noticed was how when talking to the citizens about the powder gangers there were so many skill checks. In order to get dynamite, I needed an explosives check, I also needed a barter check to get more supplies, and I needed some speech checks to get people to join. I failed everything but the speech check, so this is a great way to show how many elements were in this game. After taking out the powder gangers, I then made my way over to Prim, as that was the next quest marker so it seemed like the right way to go. Once I got to Prim, I was introduced to the first major faction, the NCR. They told me not to go in, but I ignored them, and then go got blown up by a ton of mines, so maybe I should have listened to them. But after getting past them and shooting a few convicts, I learned that the deputy sheriff was captured, so I had to go in, shoot a few more convicts, and free him, where he told me that the city needed a new sheriff in town. This simple request opened my eyes to the wonders of New Vegas. At first glance, this seems like a fairly simple task, but this simple task has many, many different possible outcomes, which is one of the things that New Vegas does better than almost every game. The number of choices and decisions you can make are massive. I decided that what I wanted to do was instate the NCR as the sheriff and give them control. This decision would be felt for the rest of the game as NPCs all over the game would come on this event and on other events I would partake in. Once I finished up in Prim, I continued on the route the main quest had begun, which led me to attend the Allegiant I'd been through, which is another new main faction in this game. This is our first real introduction to them and it goes to show the true brutality and ruthlessness of the Legion which shows us what the faction is like. One of the things I think New Vegas is better than most, if not all games, is introductions. All of the introductions to people, places, and factions are grand spectacles that really catch your attention. This game does this with the intro and the sun glaring as you leave Good Springs, and then does the same thing with the Legion and the people being crucified. It also does the same thing with the strip, as when you first enter the famous music starts up and all the lights are glowing. Comparing this to Fallout 4, we can see the intro to the Minutemen, which is an okay intro with the Deathclaw fight and an alright introduction. The Railroad has a bad introduction with a lame quest build up and a lame reveal. The Brotherhood has a pretty good introduction as they enter on their massive blimp with the music blaring. The Institute has an okay one with the reveal of their base being cool and all, but nothing too special. This could just be a case of me not feeling the same wonder as I did, as I played through Fallout 4 so many times, but I don't remember feeling this way on my first playthrough. Anyways, after looking around that town, I continued on where, 
In order to get more information on who shot me, I would need to clear some ghouls out. This began one of the strangest quests I've ever done. The ghouls wanted to go to a new world and needed my help to get a spaceship working to leave. And for some reason within one mile there was just rocket fuel and other components flying around. But after giving them these components, they got into a spaceship and just flew off. And the entire time there was just a regular dude who was with me who thought he was a ghoul the entire time. I don't know, it was really weird, but it was actually a super fun quest. After that all finished up, I learned about another faction, the Great Khans. They were held up at a city where the NCR had them pinned down. This is another reason Fallout New Vegas is such an interesting game, because if this was Fallout 4, it would definitely just have you walk in, shoot them up, and then just pick up some note off them explaining the situation. But instead, New Vegas gives you multiple different ways to handle this. You can negotiate with the cons and the NCR and have them both end peacefully, or you can run straight in and shoot them. Or you can talk to them and go back to the NCR, and then shoot them anyways after you learn about the NCR orders to kill them, or convince them anyways to end it peacefully still. This really goes to show in this game, you can manage to play the game however you want to, and not just end everything in violence like in Fallout 4. After that, I was able to get to Vegas and enter the Strip, and yeah, it's pretty sick. The Strip is way cooler than anything Fallout 4 has in it. The lore behind Las Vegas being able to survive the nukes and being run by Robco, who is still alive, is just so bizarre and wacky, and it just feels so natural for this world. There are so many things to do in New Vegas, whether you want to gamble your life savings away, take a nap in a vault, or do other things. When I first confronted Benny, I decided to meet him up in his suite, and then he backstabbed me and ran away. Luckily, I passed a speed check, and he let me live. And after searching him through, I found a robot called Yes Man. This friendly robot is an iconic figure in Fallout. Yes Man is a robot who is programmed to always be helpful and answer any questions, and his main goal is to help take over New Vegas and remove Mr. House from power. Yes Man lets you know where Benny went off to, and then I headed down and got very conveniently invited to where Benny is in the Legion camp. After running towards the Legion camp, I was able to find where Benny was and finally get the platinum chip back, which I asked by Caesar to go and destroy everything in a bunker. Instead of doing that, I upgraded Mr. House's Securitron army and had fought Benny in a cage match. Somehow Caesar didn't realize that I betrayed him and he let me walk free, so I went back to Mr. House and told him what I did. I then had the option to kill Mr. House for Yes Man, and I attempted to do that, but maybe I shouldn't have upgraded his Securitron army because I got nuked as soon as I opened his secret door. After doing all that, I went to start doing some of Yes Man's chores, where I was to go and meet every faction and see if they'd get them allied with me to help me. The first thing I went to was the White Glove Society, where there was a whole side quest with them kidnapping people and being cannibals. After I wrapped that all up, I went back to the yes and told them that we should just ignore them. After finishing that up, I went over to talk to the Boomers, and I was told I needed to jump from building to building to avoid getting an artillery strike on top of me. I misunderstood what to do and got blasted a few times until I finally realized how to get to the other side, and I talked to the Boomers. They had me do a bunch of random side quests where I helped clear some ants out, help the dude find the love of his life, and fix some solar panels. The final thing I had to do was lift up a bomber out of a lake for them. The journey here was rough, and one of the first things I learned about in New Vegas was the Death Claws. They are not the same as the Death Claws in Fallout 4. The Death Claws in Fallout New Vegas are abominations that will kill you in two hits and have an unlimited amount of health. Well, all you need in Fallout 4 is a decent gun to kill one. I have a new fear of death cloths because of this journey, and it took me a while to get, of sneaking around to get past them. It didn't help that my companion really loved just to charge full speed at them and die. Eventually though, I lifted up the plane and was able to get the boomer support for the battle at Hoover Dam. I then went on to help the Brotherhood of Steel and get their support. First, I had to clear out hordes of scorpions and then go through the process of helping the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood in this game is not a major faction, as they cannot be sided with and you can't finish the game with them. But they are still in this game because it's the Brotherhood of Steel, of course they are. The Brotherhood in this game is locked in isolation in their bunker, and one of the paladins in the bunker wants to overthrow the Elder and stop the isolation. I helped this paladin and went through all the databases in an attempt to help him, and after running around and getting a bunch of hollow tapes from the dead patrol groups, I learned that the groups were sent on special assignments that went behind the paladin's back. This was enough to get the Elder kicked out and the paladin put in as the new Elder. This made the Brotherhood like me enough to side with me from now on. But first I had to go kill the Van Graffs, 
This proved to be a very challenging as I would die many times, but eventually after sp spamming dynamite in a grenade launcher, I was able to kill them and stock up on lots of goodies. For my reward, I was granted access to power armor and the arsenal that the Brotherhood had. One thing I do not like about Fallout New Vegas is the power armor. Power armor in New Vegas feels much more like a regular piece of armor that I can wear, while on Fallout 4 it's an entirely different suit that needs to be powered, it's a whole animation to get into it. I do like how there are a lot of preliminary stages you must go through to wear the armor, you can't just immediately wear it. I think the best inclusion of power armor would be to make it so there's a skill check of some sort to wear it like in New Vegas, but the armor still needs some sort of power and it's more massive and a spectacle like in Fallout 4. Anyways, after that, I was ready to finish up the game. But first, I had to go kill Mr. House. With my new levels and power armor, I was able to run past the Securitrons and make it to Mr. House without getting blown up. I then killed Mr. House and put Yes Man in charge. Once finishing that up, I was able to go to Hoover Dam and finish up the game, where I'd run in, shoot up some Legion soldiers, and install Yes Man into some database to let him access the Securitron army. Once doing this, I had to run to the Legion camp, where I'd clear out and run into the final boss of the game. Legate Lanius? Legate Lanius? I don't know. This was an extremely hard boss where I would die many times, mainly because I would get ragdolled and could not get up in time before dying. Eventually, after letting a minefield and beating him into it, and potentially lowering the difficulty, I was able to kill him and meet the NCR at the gate. The NCR was told that they were no longer welcome and I was taking control, and when I was attacked, the Securitrons instantly vaporized them, and I finished New Vegas as a new. One of the things that really stood out to me in New Vegas was the choices and the freedom I had in this game. New Vegas truly feels like you can do whatever you want and make all sorts of choices. The other thing that stands out to me is the world. The world in New Vegas feels so alive and like it is constantly moving and when you jump in, things are already moving and it feels like a real world. In Fallout 4, it seems like the game and the world begin and end with you. Interactions do not start and the world will not progress without you. And it never did progress until you got into the world. But in New Vegas, it feels like the world is alive and that stuff happens with or without you.